Just before Big Brother started, there was a huge phenomenon in the United States called Jenny Cam. For $15 a year, subscribers can see all the pictures. Jenny at work, eating, sleeping. Where this girl had set up a webcam in her room and everyone was talking about it. It was a kind of very, uh, you know, almost like a democratic relationship with fame. People write to me and say, it made me feel a little better to know that there's somebody who's not afraid to be themselves without having to dress it up. And uh, it, it sort of swept the world. <laughs> Launched in July 2000, Big Brother took TV to a new level of voyeurism. By making the housemates perform for the cameras, the show created a new kind of star. But ironically, its first guinea pigs didn't think anyone was watching. I remember working on the first series of Big Brother and it was wonderful because you'd have all these people sitting around going, my God, I bet you nobody's watching this and, you know, I bet you anything I'm going to lose my job because I thought I'd be back in two weeks. It was so genuine that they didn't know what would happen. Who is going to find ten people talking absolute bollocks interesting? What did you do? Uh, the, most, the most bizarre one was a mother and daughter over a weekend. <laughs> Who's going to watch it unless, you know, you're a student or you're, you know, you can't sleep at night. In series one, Nick Bateman thought he could get away with some sneaky business to nab the 70 grand prize. There's one prize and only one winner and yeah, I had a game plan and I executed it. Nick's game plan was simple. He tried to manipulate how the other housemates voted when it came to eviction time. He's a treacherous one, Craig, as well. He's a treacherous one. But after several weeks, when the only people in Britain who didn't know about his dirty tricks were the ones living under his nose, Nick got caught. How, how can you be so two-faced? Yeah. You know, if this is true. You, well, I know it's true. Right. And you know it's true. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Oh, my God. Oh, come on. There's cameras there and <laughs> Britain was appalled. But viewing figures soared overnight from three to seven million. A new kind of tabloid star was born. Nasty Nick was set to cash in on his dubious reputation. Nick may have thought he was being clever, but in believing the £70,000 was the goal, he was as naive as the rest of the housemates. The winner of Big Brother is Craig. Suddenly, it was clear. The real prize was fame. If you fast forward two or three years, now people are going in with, with PR and, and agents. Watch people on Big Brother. They are on from the word go, from the moment they get down those stairs and into that room, they're on, they're projecting, they're looking for the camera. <laughs> a friend has a daughter and she said that she was going to go into to the law. And they said to her, well, do you think maybe you should go on Big Brother so that you've got something to fall back on? A whole new generation of wannabes quickly realised that going on Big Brother was one of the fastest ways to change your life. Now, every summer, the more pantomime your personality, the more likely you are to steal the limelight. You want to see the rest? You know the number. It chooses people who it knows we are going to find interesting because they'll make themselves look incredibly stupid. I knew Birmingham weren't in London, but I thought Cambridge was in London. They're freaks in a zoo. The housemates have been drinking for nine and a half hours. You encourage them to be themselves and to think that being yourself is the most marvellous thing you could do. What Big Brother is, is, is an arena. We're not sharing anything with those people who appear on television. We're laughing at them sometimes. We're pouring scorn on them at other times. Television is much more democratic, much more open now, and people are allowed to appear uh, in their own right. And some people might sneer at what I've just said and say, well, actually, it's still manipulated and all the rest of it. The truth is that a lot of people are allowed on television on their own terms to be themselves in a way they never were 30 years before. And it's not just our fleeting chart toppers. Each summer we may eat, sleep and breathe the latest Big Brother personalities, but of the 150 or so contestants that have entered the house, how many do you actually remember? 
Hello, I'm Johnny. I'm 29 and I'm from County Durham. Oh, yeah, I remember him, that Johnny guy. Oh, yeah. Was voted uh, Best Buttocks 1996 South Lanarkshire. <gasps> oh, Jason was the one who stole the faces all the time. I was expecting a bigger crowd or something, so I'd like, you know. Yeah. Who was he? Hello, big brother. It's Helen. Yeah, there is some that you forget, I think, definitely. But I think when you've got such a Welsh accent as mine, then you're not going to forget me, are you? Helen Adams. I think I'm the only Welsh person who's been in here, and it's fantastic. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! 2.6 million people voted for Helen Adams, but now, despite the Keep Fit videos and her appearances in Hello, she's a hairdresser in Swansea again. We kind of mock them and we laugh at them and we deplore them and all the rest of it. But it must be a pretty miserable life, I think, being a TV celebrity in many ways. Partly because you become addicted, clearly, to the fame. What are you doing on set? I'm just fixing one of your bulbs. Watch don't knock over the Alma because I just love my Helen sign so much. Literally like a drug where what you depend on actually makes you, you know, is bad for you. Um, and I think that's something entirely new.